It's been a while since I built my last compressed air engine and then I thought let's build a new one. What I would like to try is to build a rotary valve air engine. Let me explain. In a rotary valve engine the valve are, you get a point I suppose, which means this is the crankshaft with the flywheel. In this crankshaft are two spaces cut out. And here of course is the eccentric, oh, shaky hands, eccentric. Yeah? And this part goes to the cylinder piston no problem. The idea is that when this notch is on the top side, air comes in this side and goes back, goes back out this side in the direction of course of the cylinder. After 180 degree turn the air comes back from the cylinder and then escapes in the nature. That's a bit the idea. And of course no model kits, no building plans, no castings, no nothing. Only scrap metal and leftovers and build as it goes. Now why again an uh, air engine? Well just because uh, I have a little space left in my dust collecting shelf. That's all. I collected some stuff and here I have a nice piece of pipe which will become the cylinder. I need a mounting plate and I hope this one will do. If not I will some find something else. In the cylinder also comes a piston. Now this is an aluminium thing I casted some time ago. So it will be an aluminium piston, maybe out of this a uh, cylinder head, the connecting rod and then the connecting pin between the piston and the rod will be this here and probably this will be the crank shaft. I have here an air valve that I built for another engine but I have to adapt or make new and this will be the bearing for the crankshaft. I will need other things but we'll see while building. Before I could start whatever operation I wanted of course I needed to find first a flywheel and I did. Now it's uh, a little bit too big to my liking but it's all I have. If I mount the flywheel here, this part will hold the main shaft so I have to lift it quite a bit. Which means my cylinder must be lifted quite a bit also. Now I can clean up a little bit this plate and bolt it here won't be too much of a problem and then install my cylinder here. That could work. I just have to find an idea. Maybe with two plates like these two pieces and then mount this part on top here. We'll see. I think I'm gonna start making the cylinder. And that is the hardest part to do because my lathe is a taper maker and not a cylinder maker. If I zero here, measure the other side. I have more than one tenth of a millimeter 
difference for the inch peoples is 4 thou. The surface finish inside here in the bore is complete crap. I flipped the part around the other way in the chuck. Now this is a 3 jaw but I did in a 4 jaw and tried to center it the best as I could. And I gave a little spring pass and now I'm really close. I still have to spend some more quality time with my woody here, spin it, spin it in the lathe, and you got a point. All right, let's get some aluminium. Surface finish is complete crap. Bad. That's not a piston finish. After way too much time spending polishing and filing and whatevering, it starts a little bit to fit. Now, of course, this is too snug as a fit for a piston, but I think it starts to get somewhere. I will do the final polishing when this part is finished and the piston is. Uh, as this cut out and all these other things. If I mount this plate on the back plate, bottom plate, mounting plate, whatever plate, this piece comes here and in here I make a bore with shoulder. It's a bit exaggerated but I suppose you got the idea in a way that my cylinder fits in that shoulder and then make an inner thread in here and make a cap that screws on this side which means this will be locked off with a cylinder head and in the same time it will be held in place the ideal machine to clean up this part is of course on the shaper. That's why I do it on the new machine. I clean up these two sides here. So I have my part. This is the base. I will have it nice and square. It will make it a lot easier with reference surfaces. I changed my 4 jaw to a 3 jaw. It's a bit of a weird setup, but uh, we'll see if it works. Thread, a standard thread like 
This one, it's very easy to find online all the dimensions you need if you don't want to calculate and all these things. Easy peasy. And you can check with a nut or if you cut internal threads, of course, easy to check with an existing bolt. But to cut the thread here in my cylinder and my cylinder head, let me show you a easy little trick to get it right every time. If come on man, not again a thread cutting video. Never mind. Okay. Yes. And again, a disaster. Let's call it the cylinder head. That could work. Yes. Of course I will install between here some kind of o-ring or packing or I don't know what yet but there will be something. I think it's maybe a good idea now to make two stands to hold the be bearing block thing here. If I cut this in two, I can make two plates like this one. Mount these two plates here vertical on this plate. And then make a cut out where this block comes in. Uh, that could work. Before I cut this plate in two, I will first do these two surfaces here in the shaper. 
So I have the same distance between the hole and this side and the hole and this side. And the shaper will be the ideal machine to do this. Sides are finished, the plate is cut in two and I cleaned up a bit the feet and now the idea is to put this way in the vise so in theory it's square, make them the same height and then cut out the shoulder to accept this square. I received stickers this week from Ollie's workshop. Now he's in the UK and he's got a whole series of Advent workshop tips. I think it's really worth having a look at Ollie's channel and subscribe because I think he really deserves it. Now the engine build starts more or less to look like something but I'm a little bit blocked for the moment because I need to buy some new beautiful little screws to mount these two plates here. Now they are mounted with uh, some sheet screws. So this block has to cut off at the length I need, fits here and I can tweak a little bit, it's always useful to have a little bit of play. Now I know more or less where I can cut off the cylinder and the flywheel of course comes here but I think I'm gonna take off this ugly paint. I really don't like it, I like more the rust color from the other Parts. So Oli, as you can see your sticker is on a cheap door, no problem at all. I put you between Kimber and Paul, I'm sure you guys will come along very well. And this is where I end this video because I'm a little bit blocked. I need to buy bolts and I need to buy a reamer and I need to buy uh, some other things. So. Let's continue next week.